Hi, this is Dave Dick, Superintendent of Falker County Schools. Uh, this is a video update relative to uh, a few different things um, that are coming up that have been asked of us and that we are things that we are planning for moving forward. Um, beginning this week, I'll be do, doing an update every week so that you are, you know, you're, you're up to date on planning uh, calendars, calendar adjustments, um, summer programming, et cetera, et cetera. So um, let me start with this, the meals program. Uh, the meals program is gonna continue throughout the summer. Um, the meals program will be um, housed in the same locations, Miller, Miller Elementary and Fauquier High School every Monday. Uh, we're we're going to shorten the hours a, a little bit, um, but it, the, the, the program itself um, will, will continue. And this is the program that's kind of a combination of uh, Fauquier County Schools, the PATH Foundation, and then, uh, of course, um, the FISH has a different uh, program, which I, I, I assume that they'll continue through the summer, but I don't know that for sure. But rest assured, the meals program will continue at Miller and Fauquier. More information coming about the schedule, but it will continue throughout the summer. Um, as far as devices go, first and foremost, let me just say, um, if, if, you, if your child is in need of a device throughout the summer, we're gonna provide you with the device, uh, no problem there. Uh, I think we distributed about 300 uh, Chromebooks, for example, and a handful of uh, mobile hotspot devices. Um, that we, th those, again, we're gonna provide those devices for students. Now, there, there are some issues that we're gonna have to work around, like, for example, rising sixth graders who are changing schools or rising ninth graders who are obviously changing schools um, we're going to have to figure out a system whereby, uh, and it's a little bit cumbersome, so we apologize, but a system whereby you, you, you return a, for example, if you're at Bradley Elementary and you, you check the device out, we would need you to return the device to Bradley. And then um, if you're transitioning to Warrington Middle School, you, you could pick up device at Warrington Middle School. I know it's a little cumbersome. More information will be coming uh, regarding this. But it's just something we have to do because the, all each of those devices is assigned to a different school and they own those devices basically and to, to manage that we, we we most likely will need to do something like that and it's possible actually that at, we will just need everyone to turn the devices in and then and then recheck them out at a later time uh, shortly after they're checked back in but it's just it's more of a, a record keeping and and making sure that we're the devices are returned to the proper school. So more information coming like that about that. So stay tuned. Um, <clears throat> summer school. Uh, we're knee deep in summer school planning. Summer school will occur on July 6th to the 24th on a Monday through Thursday schedule. It will be virtual. Um, there'll be a letter coming uh, from your school's principal uh, soon describing the summer uh, opportunities, the summer programs, um, and, and, and encouraging uh, students in different categories and their families to enroll and participate in a very vigorous summer school program. The summer school program itself will be three tiers. And, uh, and actually, uh, there's actually a fourth tier, which we're calling the zero tier. Um, the, the three tiers, official tiers are, tier one is for K through five and six through eight students who are simply interested in, in continuing uh, with summer, with learning throughout the summer and, and different opportunities during the summer. Um, and it's, there, none of these would be high school credit uh, courses, but there will be opportunities for students in K-5 and 6 to 8 uh, not necessarily students who are at risk or not, but more of a, yeah, if you're interested, we'll work that out for you. The second tier are for at-risk students. Uh, at-risk students who are at risk primarily because of the closure and who are in danger of falling behind, for example, in their, in their reading levels. Um, that would, those, are, those are the tier two students we're providing an opportunity for those students as identified by building principals. And then tier three are the most at-risk students who are, again, they'll be identified by uh, building administration. So those are the three tiers. Again, 
you'll be receiving, you'll be contacted by your building principal, schedules will be provided, et cetera. Uh, the, the zero tier is um, really a, a, some training or resources for parents who are simply interested in, in making sure their, their children's learning continues during the summer. We have, we've had parents who have reached out to us about, you know, they want to provide activities for the kids, not really sure what to do. So we're going to provide some training there and some resources for parents, more information for forthcoming there. Um, so that's the long and short of the summer school program. Um, June, it, it will be a time for planning, professional development for teachers, the development of the, the, uh, the uh, instructional schedules, uh, scheduling time for summer school students who need devices who perhaps don't have a device to come and pick one up. Uh, so that's what June will be primarily reserved for is prep for a summer program and then the program itself will begin July 6th. Now the biggest piece of this announcement this morning is relative to the fall schedule. Getting lots of questions completely understandably uh, from parents, students, uh, teachers, administrators, what's going to happen in the fall? And what's the situation going to look like in the fall? Well, we, we, just so you know, we, we formed eight separate committees who are in the midst of planning for the different pieces relative to fall opening, whether it be a virtual opening, whether it be a virtual opening with a um, sort of a late, you know, September face-to-face uh, -face opening where the buildings are actually open, perhaps a virtual um, throughout first semester program or a, a blended approach. I'm telling you all this because we, at this point, this is what we're receiving from the state is we're not sure what opening is going to look like. The state has formed a committee they have their own committee that they're uh, and they're in the midst of planning for the same sorts of things that we're planning for, and they'll come out with recommendations. And I suspect that their recommendations will learn from them, but they're going to include a lot of the things they're already already planning for, like what do we do about transportation? I know uh, something from the CDC recently came out with, uh, you know, it could be that we only have ten kids on a bus in order to. Uh, Promote social distancing, where that would create obvious issues for getting kids to and from school. Um, how do we deliver meals to students at school uh, so that there's there's no danger of uh, anything being transmitted? What will kids have to wear masks at when they come to school? Uh, will we have to provide those masks um, if if mid September suddenly there's another outbreak and we have to close school down? We want to be able to in 24 to 48 hours get the virtual program up and running again. So there, there's lots of pieces to this puzzle that the, these eight committees are working on, plus the committee that the state has, has created that will be making recommendations to us. And we'll learn from those recommendations, but we need to do due diligence here in our locality and make sure that we're preparing for various, very specific scenarios that we need to be ready for. Um, and another important part of this, and this, this will, you'll be hearing more about this. We, we want to involve the community in a lot of these discussions. Um, the the uh, students for, uh, excuse me, parents on the school support council, uh, teachers on, on the ACES committee, which is my, basically my teacher advisory committee. Um, perhaps uh, uh, conversations with members of the special ed advisory committee, SEAC. Um, so we need to be in, involving community in this conversation uh, so that we're sort of all on the same page and we're all understanding at least at minimum the complexity that is associated with opening uh, schools in the fall because it is going to be quite complex. Um, so to wrap up, let me just say this. Um, typically when I do these video updates, I get a lot of questions. Questions start running and that's absolutely fine. No problem. So just rest assured, we're going to, this is just a, me providing you with, you know, the preliminary information, what's been planned, where we are in the process. We'll be providing you with more specific information as the week, weeks wear on. Um, the, um, hats off to the folks serving on these committees and working hard to prepare. Uh, it's, a, it's very difficult work, labor-intensive work. Um, 
mid-June is, is where we're, we've got that circled on our calendars at mid-June being the time where, based on what we're hearing from the state and the governor's office, um, the uh, Virginia Department of Education, we should have a much clearer picture in mid-June um, about what fall is going to look like. So that's, that's if you're looking for like a fail-safe point around mid-June, we should have more information, more specific information from the state of what school opening may look like uh, and what the recommendations are from Virginia Department of Health, for example, and the Virginia Department of Education. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Last but not least, I'm uh, getting more and more questions about calendar. You can expect there's going to be a calendar change. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and go on record here and say that um, it's pretty unlikely that uh, we're going to be opening August 12th. Uh, I'm just, I'm not seeing it. I'm not, it's not what I'm hearing from the folks at the state. Um, so we'll have to wait and see. But I'm going to, you know, there's a big caveat there. The caveat is the governor and what the governor is, uh, where he is in, in terms of his announcements. And it, I guess it's possible that something really positive can happen by mid June and things are all back to normal, but that's extremely unlikely. So I would anticipate that there will be a calendar change. And I promise you, as soon as we have that information available, and as soon as we are able to give you specific and accurate information, data, et cetera, uh, regarding a calendar change and what fall semester is going to look like, you're going to have it. So each week I'll be providing these updates. As I learn more, I'll share more with you. And I know people get really concerned when it comes to calendar changes because you're planning ahead, you got daycare issues, et cetera, et cetera. I understand that, but we we are sort of at the mercy of not only corona the coronavirus, but uh, what is being allowed in terms of um, this, where the state is. So hang in there. Uh, thanks to all. Thanks to everyone. I want a, a special thank you to the high school administrations for doing a marvelous job with the uh, graduations just it was they were outstanding just thank you all so much for that thanks to the committees for the, the planning work as we move ahead thanks to you all for your patience um, please continue to be patient as we put, get information we will share it with you um, and um, you, you have my word on that so that's it for now we'll, i'll check in with you again next week thank you